All right, gang, we're still talking about wireless personal area networks right now. And the technology that we want to look at next is one that enables us to define a device that has connections to other devices within generally a small amount of space, decent throughput, quick connectivity. Technology that I'm talking about, of course, is Bluetooth. So we want to know what Bluetooth is and kind of how it relates to working with a Wi-Fi network, some of the key terms that are associated with that world. So Bluetooth is based upon a series of point-to-point -point connections between a defined master device and one or more slave devices. And so we can use this to send data, to send uh, synchronization of content, to upload photos, whatever we need to do here. And those devices don't really see each other. They see their connection to the master device. So the master kind of coordinates the connections and organizations between these devices in order to allow them to, to upload or download. Now, something to be aware of is that we could have, uh, for example, show this out here. Uh, we could configure this in such a way where a device is a slave device, like this first laptop here. But then that device could also simultaneously be defined as a master device. By doing that, we could have an extension of this where we actually have a master device connecting to a, a slave, but then that slave device being a master to another. The term for all of this put together is what we call a PicoNet, all right? So a PicoNet, really tiny, right? Just a, a very small network. And when we start connecting masters to other devices that are also masters for another extension of that network, that is known as a scatternet, all right? And that extends this out uh, even farther. Let's look a little more at the Bluetooth technologies. Now, again, don't confuse this with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is based upon the 802.11 standard. That's not this. When we're talking Bluetooth, it's based upon the IEEE-defined 802.15 standard. So it has its own unique layer two protocol number to identify. It is an RF standard. It's, that is what it's based on. Uh, and it does not have any line of sight restrictions because of that. It's wireless. In fact, it's operating at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, just like an 802.11 Wi-Fi configuration. Now, keep in mind, that means there's the potential for interference, for one network to interfere with the other network's ability to deliver traffic effectively at its highest throughput because of competing uh, signal across uh, colliding channels. The fact that it doesn't have line of sight restrictions, it, we want to remind you that this is not infrared, right? Infrared is another way that we can have these little point-to-point -point connections between a peripheral like a printer and a, a central device, a computer, and it's certainly effective. It does have, however, a line of sight restriction where because this is wireless, we can go through walls and other various materials. And although they may absorb some of the signal, again, we can get there uh, in most cases unless it's too thick. We can reach speeds of up to 24 megabits per second. Excellent. And it is, uh, it is a high security network because of that point to point nature, because of the way that it establishes those connections. Now, there are three classes of products, type uh, class one, class two, and class three. And what you find is that as you move from one class to the next, you have decreasing power in terms of uh, milliwatts. Okay, so how much power is class one? 100 milliwatts. Class two, 2.5. Whoa, big reduction there. And then all the way down to one milliwatt for a class three device. Now, a class one device can potentially go 100 meters in distance. That's pretty far for a Bluetooth device. You're, there are very few devices that work this way, usually acting as uh, some sort of uh, uh, a, where a Bluetooth connection is needed, but it's up on a tower. It's something that it's, it's just not a normal connection that you would make. Most Bluetooth devices are going to go about 10 meters because they are class two. This is the by and away, far and away the most common type of Bluetooth connection. There are even more limited ones that use the minimum power of one milliwatt, and those only go about one meter in distance. Okay, so three classes, uh, one, two, and three of Bluetooth based upon the power, and the power determines how far they can go before the signal attenuates, peters out to nothing. So we saw that master-slave relationship. It's important to remember that essentially there's a maximum of eight devices that you can have in any Bluetooth-based PicoNet because of the fact that there's a master with up to seven slave devices. Okay, 
Uh, again, we love it because it's wireless. You don't have to cable between these. We don't have to have an infrared line of sight. We don't have to set up an infrastructure. We don't have to have an access point to get each other connected. This is, an ad, this is like an ad hoc wireless network, but it actually is a more effective network. As we said, ad hocs are phased out at this point, and this is part of why. It's because there's better technologies like Bluetooth PicoNets. Uh, it emulates the capabilities of cable, but for uh, mobile users, again, we said we've got the PicoNet or ScatterNet term. And again, it's like an ad hoc network, but not using any uh, Wi-Fi wire, related technologies or 802.11 related technologies. This is 802.15. It's a completely different standard. Speaking of standards, there is an alternate implementation of this known as iBeacon, the iBeacon technology. So when we talk about iBeacon, we're essentially saying uh, we're, we're talking about the Apple implementation of the Bluetooth low energy standard. Again, one of the nice things about Bluetooth is the fact that, uh, again, as the devices find each other and track each other, it does use some power, but they have uh, implemented a low energy standard of it that is much better about reducing the amount of power consumed. And so much of that is based upon the advertising protocol, right? How often does it spend say, I'm here and I'm Bluetooth, if anyone wants to connect to me? That's what really drains your batteries on these portable devices that are more likely to use a Bluetooth connection. So again, we can have these push notifications to identify that we're here. Uh, we can enable uh, this communication. The Bluetooth low energy standard, the iBeacon standard, again, this idea of push notifications, that's actually where a Bluetooth device will let you know that it's there and may give you actually, again, uh, kind of some business related ideas here, directions inside of a store. Okay, so I've got an, I have a Bluetooth enabled device. I'm not receiving a text message. I'm not receiving anything else, but I'm getting a Bluetooth transmission to me uh, that is actually there to give me directions. So if I accept it, then I open it up and there we go, or coupons or social media again, this is the idea where instead of my having to find the Bluetooth device, the Bluetooth device can find me and let me know it's available, thereby allowing me to uh, connect up and see what, what it has to offer me. Now, there's security implications based on that too. Obviously, that could be used against us if we're not, uh, not careful. So these are some of the standards that are associated with our Bluetooth connections, right? 802.11.15. And for the most part, we need to know how it is different than Wi-Fi, all right, in terms of the different classes, the limited distances, uh, the low power utilization that it works with, uh, the low energy, uh, low, low power utilization that is based on, and the point-to-point -point eight device maximum ad hoc network style of networking that the Bluetooth PicoNets implement.